Hong An, an English teacher from Panyang High School, and I'll be taking care of this session as last time. And it's good to see you guys again. And as you can see, there are much more students who Ah, okay. So, Mr. Ogaya, could you say hi to our students? Can you unmute yourself? Because you're on mute. And you can see you, teacher, for the beautiful students of South. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you so much for the last time that you have shared to us. And today, another interesting topic that we are going to share. We are looking forward that we are going to learn more and to learn further so that we could be able to establish a harmonious and a healthier relationship with the Philippines and Korea. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. We, uh, and we are skipping the students greeting since we did last time. Now we'll have a presentation time that the students have prepared. So the first time, first team from Rizar High School will give a presentation about Phil Philippine heroes in history. Who's in charge of it? Philippine 학생들 먼저 발표를 할게요. 그 얘기였어 지금. 아 들었지? 아. 아. Um, who's going to give a presentation about Philippine heroes in history? Uh, yes, uh, Miss Bangkaya. Miss Bangkaya, are you now here? Is he here? Right. Miss Bangkaya, are you now? Yes. Okay, uh, you can share your I, screen uh, and please, please get started once you are ready. All right. Uh, Ms. Bankaya, together with your group, please share your screen for your presentation. And please start immediately because we're running out of time in terms of the Zoom span. It's just only for 40 minutes. So I hope that you could also be able to present it as soon as possible. Ms. Bankaya, please proceed. Sorry, sir, just a minute. Sorry. Uh, Ms. Bankaya, there's uh, a feedback in terms of that is being created within your place. Teach Park, uh, they are experiencing now a technical difficulty, but they are now fixing it. Uh, wait for a moment, and then they are uh, going now to present it. Okay. Like, uh, before, but while they are preparing Teacher Park, uh, we would like also to share something regarding uh, this one. Can you see what's happening with this? Uh, okay. Okay. I have the puzzle which actually been crafted by my students and they really love this. It's actually one of the famous palace in South Korea. Thank you so much with this. This is very interesting and challenging and this actually improves all about the mental ability of my students also while they are enjoying making this. Thank you so much, teacher Park. Um, we're happy that you like that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. 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 
Miss Bangkaya, what about your team there? Are you now ready, please? Uh, we are so very much sorry with regards to the technical difficulty that we are experiencing because this actually somewhat this is just like uh, normal already here in our place because sometimes the internet connection is sometimes strong then later on it will become sweet and sometimes we will be lost instantly and that's actually uh the hard experiences and challenges that to beat it's because that's beyond our control but as long as possible we are finding ways to fix it right so they are now at uh, teacher park they are now uh, ready to present thank you so much okay. for your patience and for <laughs> with my students to present Proceed, please. Ms. Bangkaya and your group, go ahead, please. Professor, we're already here. Hello, everyone. So before we start our presentation, we would like to introduce ourselves. So my name is Maria Adeline Bangkaya, and here with me are my members of the group and my friends. So this is... Hi, I'm Teresa Macastilla. And hello, everyone. I'm Janica Baranga. And we're delighted to present to you our presentation to which it, it is related to our heroes from, from the history of the Philippines. Every country has its heroes, whether they are big or small. A myth or a legend, a creator and actual person. A hero can be considered all shapes and sizes. They serve as a role model because of the good deeds and moral values that they contribute to the country. Until now, their stories are passed through several, uh, sorry, passed through every generation to remember what they accomplished which bring the nation together as one. As for our country, which is the Philippines, we will introduce to you our two well-known heroes, which is Dr. Herzal and Andres Panifacio. So we will start with Dr. Herzal. So who is Dr. Herzal? So, Dr. Jose Ratasha Rizal Mercado y Alonza Rialonda is the Pambansang Bayani, or as known, or known more as National Hero of the Philippines, to which he was known not only in the Philippines but in other countries too. He was a Filipino nationalist, a polymath, author, inventor, novelist, ophthalmologist, physician, and many more professions that he was known of. His contribution serves and needs more countrymen up to state. And here are the interesting facts about him. So first, Pepe and Jose are his nicknames. Elonglaan, which derived from the said nickname of a railway station in Manila, is his pen name when he joined La Solidaridad, a propaganda movement which advocates political reforms of the colony under Spain. Next, he made 31 literatures in his time. The most famous works that he did was the novel No Limitang Here, or Touch Me Not, and the sequel El Filibusterismo, The Reign of Grief. Fun fact, these two novels were encountered by 9th and 10th graders in the Philippines. And I could say um, it's very fascinating and amazing to read these two novels. So if you like reading novels, I suggest you read this one. Next, about his ancestry, Hasir Sal had a long and multiple ancestry. He had a Chinese, Tagalog, and Spanish blood within him. His father's ancestor, Lam Ko, was from Fujian, China, migrated and lived here in the Philippines to avoid the growing plague in his hometown while on his mother's side were also Chinese and Spanish, to which his mother's lineage can be traced to the Florentina family, who are Chinese mestizo, and his grandmother, Regina Okowa, are mixed Spanish, 
Tagalog, and Chinese with his maternal grandfather, Lorenzo Alberto Alonso, who is half Spanish. Then we will move on to Andres Bonifacio. So who is Andres Bonifacio? Andres Bonifacio E. De Castro was a Filipino Freemason and the father of the Philippine Revolution. He was also known as the father of the Katipunan, which he lived to seek independence from the colonial rule of the Spaniards. Here are the interesting facts about Andres Bonifacio. He was known as the Supremo, or the president in the Spanish, when he led the Katipunan that he changed or reorganized into a revolutionary government called Haringbayan Katagalug, the sovereign of the Tagalog people. He also composed four narratives, and one of his well-known works was the Pag-ibig Asinubuangu, that urged the Filipinos to be patriotic to their own country. Andres Benifacio once dressed as a woman, armed with, armed with his legendary bolo or bolo. He was about to pass through the Garja Civil Checkpoint in Balintawa. To conceal his identity, he decided to wear the woman's clothes. He was also a part time theater actor who appeared in several Moro Moro plays. He often played the role of Bernardo Carpio, a fictional character in the Gallup folklore. Here are some fun facts about Andres Vinifacio. Did you know that Wednesday will be celebrating his birthday? Yes, Andres Vinifacio's birthday was on November 3rd, 1860. That day is considered as the day, the Vinifacio day. So you may ask, um, why did we consider these two people as our national heroes? Well, as you can see, we consider them as our heroes because of their deeds that lead us to this peaceful life that we have right now. They may did a lot of mistakes on their previous lives when they were alive, but their contributions made a huge impact to change the history of our country. Well, the two heroes gained the freedom or the independence of the Philippines from the Spaniards in their own way. Rizal used his knowledge and his writing skills to reveal the inhumane manipulation of the Spanish government in the Philippines. He chose to have a silent war and not a war because he thinks that's the only way to gain freedom. Well, Andres Bonifacio was inspired by Rizal's words and his blazing passion for the country. He gained the Philippine sovereignty through the revolution. Before we end this presentation, we would like to leave you some two calls that came from our two heroes. So first, from Dr. Serizal, ang kabata ng pag-asa ng bayan, or in the translation, or what it means is, the youth is the hope of our future. And from Andres Bonifacio, Hindi mo ngayon ng sunod kay Patala sa iyong kapurian at higit sa lahat sa iyong sarili. Which means, love your country next to God, your pride, and above all your sin. So once again, my name is Maria Dudimbang Taya. Sorry, so I'm just going to be here. Johnny Cabranda. And together, we thank you for listening to our presentation. Salamat po! Anyang! Anyang! Thank you for the presentation. The next team from Tanyan High School will also introduce historical figure in Korea.
Hello. We are Kwang Yeop. Rinso. From Danyang High School. Today, we would like to tell you about Korea's most famous general, Admiral Lee Sun Shin. This is the table of contents. First, Lee Sun Shin. Second, his achievements and the value of his achievements today. Admiral Sun Shin was a Joseon general who read the naval practice and he won many battles. When Japan invaded in 1592, he won battles such as the Battle of Myeongnyang, the Battle of Noryang, and the Battle of Hansan Island. First, the Battle of Myeongnyang was won by only 12 ships against 133 Japanese ships, and Admiral Isunshin showed a strong will to win by saying, I still have 12 ships left. Next, the rank C battle is the last battle of Isunshin. And he asked word before he was shot and died are very famous. He said, don't let anyone know of my death, not to demoralize soldiers. Lastly, the famous battle of Hansan Island was won by using the tactic called Hagikjin, which refers to the tactic of attacking the enemy after unfolding the ship of Joseon in the shape of the wings of a crane. Basically, it takes the form of a straight line and then attacks in a semicircle when the enemy attacks. As a result, it is said that about 100 Japanese ships were sunk. This is the total ship used in the Battle of Hansan Island. Finally, I will introduce his current value. He currently has his portrait on coins in Korea, and there is a statue of him in Seoul. Also, a movie related to him was released. And in particular, the movie about the Battle of Myeongnyang exceeded 10 million viewers. He is a person from 16 countries, but he has a lot of influence on Korean today. Please don't forget Admiral Isenshin, whom I introduced today. Thank you for listening to the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are running out of time due to the Zoom time limit, so we're going to open the new meeting room. So come back to come back with the new link. The 선생님들이랑 학생분들 저희 줌 시간 제한이 있어서 방을 다시 열 거거든요. 그래서 선생님이 링크 다시 보내주시면 거기로 다시 들어와 주시면 됩니다.
Who's turn it in 
Odio estos trucos. Mr. Ogara, who is going to give a presentation about food and coding? Students are in my room. I'm going to try so that there will be no feedback. Uh, please wait for a moment. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <웃음> 이거 어떻게 없어져? <웃음> 안 사라져. 도장을 넣으셨는데요? 아 그래? <웃음> Hello, teacher. <웃음> Is it ready? I think these students, teacher park, are now ready for their presentation. Okay. And share your screen. And please get started once you are ready. Does the screen already seen? Can you view our screen? Hello? Hello? Can you hear us and can you view our screen now? We cannot give you. Yes. Hello? Good start. Okay. Okay, please wait for a moment. So, good day, everyone. We are the presenters from the Philippines Rizal High School. So, we will be talking about the traditional food and clothing culture of the Philippines. So, let's start with traditional food. So, an overview. So, the Philippines is located within the fat. Yes, can you hear us? So, again, the Philippines is located within the fat migration and trade for thousands of years. This explains the country's cuisine having a multicultural influence that resulted, for it, that resulted for its food to have a mixture of sweet, salt, salty, and sour flavors, ranging from leche flan to chicharron to sinigang. The Filipino cuisine being highly influenced by other countries. Its food mostly have Chinese influence like lumpia, pancit, and lomi as well as Spanish influence in Leche Plan, Puchero, and Heron. An interesting fact is that Pampanga um, that became the cuisine capital of the Philippines because of a lot of the best Filipino dishes originated from this municipality. The reason for this is because Kapampangans, or the ones who live in um, Pampanga, are known for their passion and skill for cooking, tracing back to the Spanish colonization era. So moving onwards, we want to focus on Filipino foods with only the native influence. So let's start with Karekare. Karekare is a stool where in kare derived from the word curry that features a rich and thick savory peanut sauce. Also, it originated before the Spanish arrived in the Philippines. This Filipino favorite, this Filipino favorite she usually starts with a base of oxtails, beef to cuts, pork, or tripe. So, traditionally, the choice of meat is simmered for hours to decide tenderness and along with a variety of vegetables, such as long beans and eggplant. It pulled together into a stew with ground peanuts for flavor, ground rice, for thickening and anito ato for so the number two is sinigang wherein sinigang is often associated with tamarind sinigang is a sour and savory Filipino stew made with onions 
tomatoes, eggplant, spinach, ginger, and fish sauce. It is one of the country's oldest dishes as has indigenous origins and existed in the Philippines long before any colonizer sent food to the country. The stew or chili as it's a linger broth, lighter broth simmers a protein in a sour broth with vegetables. The sourness comes from a sour fruit, typically tamarind and never vinegar. So moving to the um, clothing culture, Due to country being colonized by other countries, its fashion and clothing has numerous evolutions. Filipino national costume is rather colorful, ornate, and beautiful. Their, natural, their national attire was formed under the influence of different cultures and got some of their features. Filipinos uh, started from wearing so-called takis. The Filipino wrap around called takis or pabalong may emerge from, from environmental conditions and technical repertoire, similar to those that produce the sarong and the sari. As the female counterpart to the loin cloth, the tapis cover the genital area. <laughs> the tapis was around was wrapped around the lower half of the woman's body and tied at the waist or below the breast. It was secured in place by the knotted ends or by a length of braided material. In some societies, in some societies belt like pieces were used. It then evolved to now, Filipinos' traditional clothing, Barong Tagalog and Barok Sayo, due to outside influence. The Barong Tagalog. The Barong Tagalog is a formal garment often made from thin fabric and richly embroidered. It's used by both men and both men. It looks like a tunic or shirt with long sleeves and is worn over a usual shirt. Filipino men often wear Barong Tagalog with a Chinese collar shirt, which is called a camisa de chino. It is ornamented or embroidered with traditional patterns, and it can be made various fabrics, but mostly natural, like pina fabric, which is hand woven from pineapple. And of course, there is also a Jusi fabric, which is machine woven from banana silk and banana fabric. Now, the Baron Tagalog is used as well by women, but there are many much more feminine and beautiful female clothing. For example, the Mestiza dress. It is a formal dress made from lace and embroidered richly. It has butterfly sleeves and it looks really charming. Number two is, of course, the Baratsaya. Actually, the Mestiza dress is a version of Baratsaya, but more sophisticated. Baratsaya means blouse and skirt and has a lot of variations. It is very typical for people in the Philippines to wear Bado Atsaya. In support of the above, let's talk about another variant of Bado Atsaya, a very popular among Filipino one. It is called the Maria Clara dress. This is a dress of Filipino national novel, Padawin, Dr. Jose Rizal. It consists of a colorless blouse and a waist long and with belt sleeves, a bubble-shaped long skirt, a stick neck covering pañuelo, and a hip hugging knee long overskirt. And that will be all for our presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Food and clothing culture of Korea.
Hello. We are here to tell you about Korean traditional culture. The Korean traditional culture we are going to introduce is Hanbok, Kimchi, and Taekwondo. First, I will introduce Hanbok. Hanbok is Korean's unique clothing that has been handed down since ancient times. In the past, Koreans enjoyed wearing white clothes to the point where they were also called a white ethnic group. However, depending on the time and place, they were various colorful hanboks, and depending on the clothes, they were different hats. In Korea, where the four seasons are clearly exist, it was important to make clothes suitable for the season. In particular, there are hot summer and cold winter, so Koreans have developed various clothing cultures by changing the material of the fabric according to the season. Hanbok has changed in various ways since the Gojoseon period. In this way, from the Gojoseon dynasty to the Joseon dynasty, there is a change that top clothes became shorter and shorter. It's a composition of women's and men's hanbok. Women's hanbok consists of a jacket and skirt underneath the skirt. There are underwear and an inner skirt. The skirt <coughs> is characterized by its white widths and natural pleats. The men wears pants and a jewelry. The ends of the pants are tied with a string called denim to arrange the clothes. When you go out, you wear an outer garment called pole. Lastly, modernization of humble. Blackpink, BTS, and many other celebrities are promoting Korean traditional culture by wearing modernly reinterpreted humble. I will introduce kimchi. Kimchi is the traditional Korean food. It is fermented by certain various vegetables such as radish, cabbage, cucumber, and missing seasoning. Kimchi is the most famous Korean traditional food. Traditionally, Koreans gather to make and share kimchi in November. When we make kimchi, you should prepare anchovy sauce, salted peas, salt, cabbage, red pepper powder, green onion, ginger, radish, and garlic. The order of making cabbage kimchi is as following. Wash the cabbage and radish clean. Cut the cabbage in half and soak it in salt water. Slice the green onion thinly, grind garlic and ginger. Squeeze the water out of the salted cabbage. Mix red pepper powder, radish, salad, salted fish, fish sauce, ground garlic and ginger. If you put the prepared seasoning Evenly between the leaves of the cabbage is done. Lastly, there are various kinds of kimchi. <coughs> there are more than 150 kinds of kimchi. The most popular ones are cabbage kimchi, tonga kimchi, gakdogi, green onion kimchi, cucumber kimchi, kerala leaf, and so on. The topic that I'm going to talk about is Taekwondo. Taekwondo is internationally recognized sport based on Korea's traditional martial arts. Taekwondo is a full body exercise that mainly uses hands and feet. Self-defense martial arts that defend 
one's body it is the general sports of South Korea. A word why speculative sports. Taekwondo is in his second. Taekwondo was born by inheriting and developing its own traditional martial art. How to play Taekwondo is as following. First, the player salutes the supervisor. Second, the competitor shall face the referee to the left and right direction. First, the referee preparation and then the game starts. And the competitor shall raise the winner's hand to declare the result of the competition. Lastly, this is a picture of the game. Thanks for listening our presentation. Right before we wrap this up, we'd like to let students share their opinions about our session. It's not much time, so just one student from each school. So can anyone from, from Rizal High School leave comments on our session? Trevor, can you still hear with me? Yeah. So I was saying, yeah. can anyone from Rizal High School live? If there's no one, then um, I give a turn to uh, Danyang High School students. Yes. Ah. So one student from Rizal High School send a message. So I want everyone to check the message. So the message is coming. So you can read it. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> then one student from Danyang High School will um, share her thoughts about our session. So, so one by two, Philippine Chingudu and the city of Bonango will be in the only way. First of all, thank you for letting us know about history and cultures of the Philippines. It was such a wonderful presentation for us. And we really hope that we can keep it in touch after even this program. Thank you again. Um, I was all really impressed by how confident you are and I really appreciate all the work. Our joint classes are now over. And once again, I thank you for taking part of this session. Bye-bye. 이상으로 필리핀 온라인 공동 수업을 마치겠습니다. 감사합니다. Bye-bye.